Now let's get into my favorite part, which is the Q&A. So let's jump into it, shall we? All right. Yes, my green screen is broke. There's no water in this dynamic pool background that I have. There's a leak in my green screen. So yeah. Hey, Bill Bones. Diesel Kane. Uh, <laughs> Matias, tough times. Park, pack four. It's funny. With all the crypto advisors out there, thank you for only covering what you own and owning up to when making a mistake on a coin, the V shopping coin, for example. Trust me, I made a ton of mistakes. I make tons of mistakes. And uh, that's just how it is. No one's going to be perfect. The ones that uh, just swoop around the rug, you got to own it, man. You know, like when I was in the military, you just, when you made a mistake, you're like, I messed that up. I'll make sure I do that again. Make sure I'll do it better. Because if you didn't correct your mistakes, then people died. It's very simple. That was it. Uh, oh, this is a great question. Do you drink beer from time to time? And what do you like? We have some amazing beers in Belgium. Going to hit the bar later on to celebrate the WMT pump. First of all, this is going to make you, you very despondent on my what I'm going to tell you right now. I'm not a big connoisseur of beer. I like to drink beer, but I drink really crappy beers. And those beers would be Miller Lights and Coors and here in Puerto Rico, Medalla. So uh, I am not very cultured, <laughs> to say the least. But uh, I will drink uh, any beer that is cold, and that's pretty much about it. Mullet's here. You know what? That We should really have an indicator called the mullet indicator. When we're starting to reverse things and we're getting more into a bullish territory, then mullet starts to make an appearance. When mullet goes away, then we're in the bear market. So good news, everybody. Uh, we should be hitting all-time highs very soon. <laughs> oh, crap. James is live at the same time as Rob. What do I do? This decision is serious for it. It's not important. Just see what he's got to say. I'm done. This is just q and I'd probably just go jump over there, see what he's got going on. Uh, let's see. Ah, meme is here. Fidelity is also adding ability to buy crypto, but not currently be able to do any territories. Puerto Rico, not surprising. Piper's here. What's up, man? Tesla's here. Brandon's here. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. That's the thing. It's... I think... This is what I truly believe. I think people make investing a little bit more complex than what it has to be. And that leads you to like kind of depend on them. But like all the things that I talk about, you can look this stuff up. You can find this on the news. It, you can really just go about and just, you know, once you get the basics down, you know, hold for a while. Uh, you, it's not a, it's not a loss unless you sell and uh, um, wait for the time to, actually sell your crypto, your assets, or your real estate property as it appreciates instead of taking it for a loss. That's pretty much the big stuff. Other than that, just pick the right uh, project. And if you don't know what the right project is, which is smart of you to think that way, then just diversify. I think that's, that, that's a bigger option. I know some people will say, but Rob, you don't understand. This guru told me that to make uh, exponential wealth, I have to concentrate my investments into one investment. And that's true, but that's coming from the mouth of a winner who at one point won for his investment, meaning they put into some investment, it paid off massively, and they're like, ah, I did it. I just concentrated my wealth into one uh, project and that was it. Let me tell you something. Uh, a lot of people told me the same thing about Luna. Where are they at now? So when I take a look at that, and then I always talk about uh, my two favorites, a dash assault, you're not making much on those, even though they sounded fantastic in, in, in the good old days. And Beardy will attest to this. EOS was supposed to be the next ETH killer. So if you concentrated in that, where would you be? So I think, I mean, not to diversify too much, but it's all up to you about what you want to do. I still diversify and I'm, pretty much across different asset classes. It's it's real estate and land and even some stocks, uh, crypto, uh, my businesses. 
and uh, you know staking and crypto. So I, I try to diversify as much as I can and try to pick the right ones, but I'll never, I'll never get it right, ever, ever. It's a good question. Is now time to go up or down? It's, uh, I'm 50% sure we're going to go up. I'm also 50% sure we're going to go down. <laughs> I love the weekend so I can watch live streams. <laughs> During the week, I had to hide on my desk so my boss can't see me working, not working because I have far more important uh, streams to watch. Well, priorities. Let's see. Hey, JH. I'm like, is it financial advice, Robert? Just advice. It's not even, it's not even advice to you. It's just what I'm doing. That's about it. Yeah, that's right, Hotsky. Think of me like your despondent uncle. Nah, yeah, yeah. Golfers here. It's all good. Let's see. <laughs> ah, that's good. Always funny. Always funny. My, the people who watch me, I have to appreciate your humor. Dollar Vigilante, never heard of them. Uh, how do you feel about Hex or Pulse Chain? I just never got into it. And like some people say, well, you know, Richard Hart's a scammer and da da da. And I'm like, well, in all honesty, uh, Hart's been around a lot longer than some of the some of the uh, fly by night uh, exchanges that have come and gone so far, and a lot of different products that are out there. So I'm not going to get into Hex or Pulse Chain. I know there's an issue right now with them him able to roll it out, but I mean, good luck for it. I'm just if I miss it, I miss it. I'm just not going to invest in either of those two. Just didn't get into it. Trust me, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass on a lot more than I'm gonna take up. Eh. Oh, thanks, the non-financial advice show. That is a fun show. It's it's good. See, there you go. There's always somebody who's who's uh, uh, a beer. Sh is it, they're gonna beer shame me. I just made that up. Mm. <laughs> when your people are rich enough to rock molds, you know it's bullish. I was thinking about this today. So uh, I'm at the beach today in Puerto Rico, because it's nice here all the time. It's beautiful. And I'm waiting for the people to show up for, for volleyball. And uh, I'm just sitting there and I'm watching all these people. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, you know, it'd be nicer. Like, I mean, this, the guys and the gals that, that, that come down are great. But I was like, you know, it'd be nicer is the people that are in my community to be able to sit here on the beach with me. And we could talk crypto and those types of things. So like, I need you guys to, at some point, you know, get out of this rat race. It's it's a heck of a lot easier to be in this situation than it is just to be constantly grinding and grinding, and grinding. Because probably you had a job you don't really like too much. I'm just guessing. I, I used to be one of those people too. But uh, you know, over time, you know, at some point you're gonna say, okay, I need to work for myself. So you work for yourself, right? Then you get into business, and you start doing investments, things start to work out. It's good. Then you start to find more challenges. But the whole thing is to get you off that. That's uh, that treadmill of just never stopping. It'd be nicer if I could have more people down here that to talk crypto and things like that than everybody just kind of stuck doing these things. And, you know, like the person I just talked about before, just catching random live streams hiding from his boss. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, bottom is in. See? Well, Charlie said it. Charlie Blass. It's a good name. <laughs> Purity's still counting his egos. I tell you, he's not counting his steps. The guy's getting crushed on, on Sweatcoin. Uh huh. Uh, any thoughts on our weave? I, it's um, decentralized storage, correct? I think, um, you know, it worked out pretty well for Apple. It worked out pretty well for Amazon Web Service, AWS. So sure, why not? Why couldn't it uh, take over, especially if it's uh, inexpensive and faster? The thing is, is it faster? And is it a better product than what we have right now? Might be a little bit safer. Just, just a question, though. 
Uh, do you hold, oh, I do hold Avalanche, matter of fact. I hold, I hold a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff I should have sold all the way, but I never sell everything all the way because I just think like even in my old strategy, even the new one, I'm not going to sell every crypto that's out there because you have to take into account that there's going to be a time when it could just blast off. So why wouldn't I hold on to it? It's so like, even if I sell 80% of my Bitcoin and 90% of my Ethereum, I always want to hold on to a little bit, a little bit because I know I'm not going to time the top, right? So let's say this is not a price prediction, but let's just say that Bitcoin goes to, I don't know. Let's say 250,000, like Tim Draper is touting, which I think is ridiculous. Tim Draper thinks it's going to go to 250,000 by the end of this year. <laughs> okay, sure. So let's just say it goes to 250,000 in the next bull run which could be 2025, 26, 27, 28. I have no idea. So let's say that I go, okay, it's going to 250. So I look at the basics, right? I look at Pi cycle top, NUPL time and risk, MVRBZ, two-year MA pull, reserve risk. I look at all these things and I go, okay, okay, 250, you know, somewhere around there, that's what it is. And, I, and I'm going to sell, not all at once, but let's just say I sell... 80% of my Bitcoin, right? If it go, if it keeps going up, and let's just say something crazy happens. Let's just say that BlackRock comes out and goes and says, you know what? We're gonna buy, we're gonna invest heavily into it because we think Bitcoin's the future. And then a couple more countries come out and say, we made it legal tender. And then who knows? Maybe America comes, somebody comes out and says, we're gonna make it, uh, you know, the world reserve currency. Then of course, 250,000 seems paltry, it seems ridiculous. Now all of a sudden it goes to 300, 350, 400,000 per Bitcoin, a half a million per Bitcoin. Who knows, something crazy happens. Well, good news, I didn't sell all of it. I sold 80% because if we're still looking at those cycles, that's probably where we're gonna go. <laughs> Rob is the only YouTuber I can listen to at a regular volume without putting my AirPods in when my husband's around. Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a big screamer. I mean, I'm old. I, I've only got so much breath left in me. Yeah, that'd be a, not a bad idea. Ah, Pipermatic. Yeah, so that's one of my dollar cost averages. I'm still micro DCing. Like that's that's one thing. Like like me, Ben, and I think Guy. We all uh, disagree on on one thing, which is actually, you know what? Guess what? It's a great question. I'm going to have those guys on. So for NFA, not financial advice, is going to be on my channel this Thursday. So it's me, Ben from the Cryptoverse, and Guy from Coin Bureau. So I'll ask both those guys. Uh, what are you buying, if anything? And are you dollar cost averaging or did you go on, go in heavy? Because they already know what I'm doing, which is I am buying Bitcoin every day and I'm buying altcoins every week and or once a month, just depends on, on the project. And I'm doing what's called micro DCAing. So instead of me paying, paying like, buying like a thousand bucks worth of uh, Bitcoin every day, I just buy like 40 bucks. It's micro, micro stuff. You never know. So I'll ask them that question. That'll be a good one. What's your opinion on it currently? Do you think Avalanche is going anywhere? I'm upset because AVAX and HPAR are the only two coins I can't put on my ledger. Thanks to you on everything off exchanges. You know, you can still take Avalanche off. Yeah, you can still take it. There's this website. Dan teaches crypto and uh, let me make sure that I did this one. Hold on. Let's go to the homepage. Let's go to how do I, how do I stay cryptos? It's a great question. And I should probably show you the screen. Okay. So sorry, I'm in module five. How do I? So I show you how to stake Theta, stake Cardano. Here it is. Yeah, how do I stake Avalanche? And you're going to put it on your own wallet, and I'm going to show you how to do it. So you can take it off exchanges. And then, of course, we've also got a couple of different ones. Also, how do I stake on stake Polkadot? And how do I stake on stake Atom, Cosmos for passive income? That's it. So again, 
Dan teaches crypto free. Don't even spam you. I only send out emails uh, when I'm when I update the the videos on there. <laughs> George is on Mars. This is Black Rockets and buy all of Bitcoin. Hey, they might. These see these are the things you just never know. So that's why I, I keep dollar cost averaging because I'm always like I either there's something bad's about to happen. Something phenomenal is going to ha- about to happen. So if something great happens, right? Whatever the heck that is, you know, ceasefire in in, in Ukraine, uh, UK uh, gets their inflation under control. Uh, inflation here in the United States is is, is tempered, and, and the Fed Reserve realizes it, starts to cut rates and quantitative easing, all that stuff. Something good happens, right? Then I'm like, well, it worked out pretty well. Then if something bad happens which is kind of where I think we're going, the recession time, more unemployment around the corner, I think, not for sure. Then I'm like, well, I'm in micro DCAing. Now it's time to go dynamic DCA, which is, you know, Bitcoin's at almost 17,000. So once it hits 15,000, I increased by 10%. So now instead of 40 bucks, I put in $44 a day. And then it goes to 14,000, I had another 10%. Or maybe 5%. I, uh, it just depends. And then 13, 12, 11, 10. I still think we're going to go somewhere around between 10 and 12 before everything's said and done. And uh, that's what I'll do. So, And yes, Cobra is a very cool logo, I got to tell you. It's the, uh, that might be G.I. Joe, Cobra, and I want to say the Decepticons. Bitcoin having not too far away. True. I think we're looking at, uh, is it August 2024? Or March 2024? I think that's when it is. Roughly. It just, it's all by blocks. It's not about dates. Oh, Jing Chow. Cho is here. Did you see the news on SEC blocking Binance acquiring Voyager? I did. History repeats itself. The Fed will drop the rates just as fast as they raise them. See? Maybe. Money print will go burr, 2024, that's my opinion. I like it. I hope you're right. I like it a lot. Yeah, unfortunately, mullet bringing in, unfortunately, the reality. <laughs> I hate to say it. So let me pull something up here. Macro, other, uh, employment, I'm just going to steal from Ben's uh, website one more time. Sorry, Ben. I'm sure you'll be okay. If you want to sign up for Ben's website, there's a link in the description. It's not an affiliate link. It's just put it in there because I steal all the time from it. So I thought that'd be generous enough. This is, let's see the unemployment rate. Sweet Mary and Joseph. Oh, this is 2020. Okay, that makes more sense. I was like, what the heck happened here? Yeah, so here's the unemployment rate. Now we want it to go up. I mean, for the for investors in the economy, it's unfortunately good when it goes up, but it's bad because people lose their jobs, obviously, right? Unemployment rate, 3.7 in October, November, 3.6, and unfortunately, December, 3.5. So it's going the exact opposite way where we thought it would go. Yikes. Yeah. Ah, Cobra Mines. It's interesting. So I was talking to one of these crypto OGs here in Puerto Rico a couple of days ago. They are into some type of, um, and I'll, figure, once they give me the go ahead, I'll tell you exactly what it is. But it's using your your excess computational power of your computer to mine Bitcoin. I don't know. Sounds interesting, but I think they've already done stuff like that. Never really worked. Yeah. Yeah, guys talking about the Euro CBDC. I watched part of the video. I had to cut it off, but it seemed like the CBDCs, doesn't it seem like to you like it's always just around the corner? Like it's almost here. It's almost here. It's like it's almost always here. And then, you know, it's just like AI. Like how many times we hear about AI is going to change everything? We're like, yeah, whatever. And then chat GPT comes along and then everything just blows up. Um, what is it? There's one called uh, Crayon. 
midsummer. I mean, these AI generated places and it's going to change everything. Speaking of which, I think this will be the time to invest because I was talking to uh, uh, Michael. He's the head, uh, the head guy for uh, Ladies NFT, and uh, we were talking about things. And he said that um, he had to generate a get code for his smart contract, and he's got a team that he does it for that they, that, it, that works with them. And he said he said just for funsies, he goes, I dropped into Chat GPT, asked it to give me the correct uh, coding for whatever smart contract he's working on. It spit it out within three minutes. He sent it over to his developers to double check it. They said, this looks good. Who did this? And he said, Chad GPT. And they said, well, there goes our job in two years. So again, when we're taking a look at these things about AI, it's gonna disrupt everything, everything, everything. Or <laughs> he says, your micro DCA is my max DCA. Everybody's on levels, man. HBAR has its own wallet too. Every, I think almost all the products have their own projects. You know who's got a nice, nice, real smooth interface project, uh, wallet is uh, Near. Near Protocol has it. I've been using that to... Um, <clears throat> you're able to put, just like on um, uh, Cosmos or Atom. No, 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 that's not it. Avalanche. Well, Near, you're able to use your, 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 uh, your ledger your nano ledger to hold your 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 keys uh, as a third party custodian and then it's it's pretty neat because you can just when you access things you have to have your ledger connected so that's what i like to do for most of them yes yeah i mean that's it you can use you can put a avalanche in the ledger wall very true cowboys versus bills are pretty nice <sighs> hope they win Cowboys. I like it when the Cowboys win because everybody's in a good mood in Texas. But we know they won't. All right. Yeah. Ben talks about DCing everyone below some sort of uh, moving average. And yeah, that's it, it makes a lot of sense. What he's there's um it's on his website. I can't show it to you though. Sorry. Hey Jeff. Ah. Florida. Jeff is, hey, you made it. That's all it counts. Oh, top global. Oddly, the markets got pumpy despite the lower unemployment rate. Yeah, it's weird. Total opposite of the projected norm in the price action versus data. I think people are tired of just sitting on cash. Could be true. Could be very true. There's a project, I can't even talk about that yet. It's about uh, tokenization of securities, but it's in, it's in Switzerland. I'll talk about it when I can. This is a good question from Rob. What do you think of the Logan Paul CoffeeZilla drama? I think it's, I think it's fantastic. That guy CoffeeZilla does, I'm just like, man, you never, like, you try to keep it on the straight or narrow. So just make sure you're never on that guy's show. So uh, of course, Logan Paul was caught by CoffeeZilla, some NFT, zoo something or other I, I don't know and uh he pretty much ripped off a bunch of people that's really what it comes down to and then he coffeezilla did such a good job of exposing it that logan paul wasn't able to make a solid rebuttal video which he did and then he took it down and then he called coffeezilla and said i'm sorry and then he's he reached out to his community and said i messed up i'm gonna make things right that's accountability I mean, but here's the here's the here's the thing. Logan Paul would never have done that if it wasn't for a guy holding his feet to the fire, which is Coffee Still. So hats off to that guy. Marty says, Rob DCA is a smart what point do you go from micro to dynamic? So this is on this is everybody's preference. It's like it's like beers. Some people like uh, junk beer like me, and some people are sophisticated and drink Belgian beers. Some people like to, you know, dynamic DCA just randomly, and some people just pick pick data points. I personally believe we're gonna go to 10 or 12K, but I've been wrong before. So for me, I kind of see like like 15K is kind of like our floor right now. Like everybody thought that June was the bottom. It wasn't the bottom. 
Then November came along and that was the bottom in 2022. I'm still waiting for their bottom, but I still think around 15K, maybe I'm wrong about that, this 12, 10 and 12K. So I started at 15K and I increased by 10%. Then I go to 14K and I increased by another 20, 10%. Then 13, then 12, then 11, then 10. So at 10K, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm increasing my micro DCing by up to, you know, 50% of what I, what I've done. So, so I'm almost, you know, almost, well, one and a half times. And then I just kind of wait for it to go down. What I should do actually is 10%, 10%, then 20%, then 30%, then 50%. So it'd be up to hundred percent. I would double it. But again, it's up to, it's up to you what you want to do. So I can't tell you that. That's just what I'm doing. Any advice, tax info, FTX? No, but uh, the guys from Coin Ledger will be coming on this month to talk to you guys about uh, taxes. Everybody's least favorite subject. I get it. I understand. That's why I bring these people on to make it easy for everybody. So remember, like if you're a spreadsheet guy or gal, have fun. That's not me. So I just use Coin Ledger. I stick it. I. API integration, I stick in there, it takes about 30 minutes, spits it all out, send it on my CPA, done. That's it. But there are always exceptions and there's always questions like, you know, uh, what do I do with Celsius and Voyager and FTX and BlockFi? How am I going to deal with that? What if I went on a boating trip and I lost all my Bitcoin and it just flew out my hand and into the water? And away it goes. And what should I do for these certain situations? And, and of course, how can I hold things back uh, and, you know, make uh, pay less taxes? So I'm going to have the CPAs in here. They're going to answer all those questions. We'll do a pre-recorded and a live session so you can ask, ask all those questions. And it's not just for America. Uh, they do this uh, globally in different countries. Not every country, but just show up and you ask your questions. All right. Yeah, I was thinking the same. I'll probably drop Monday. True. The pool man. It's a good name. Why do you think Bitcoin should go down to 12K? What if it goes right up from here? Great question. What if it goes right up from, right from here? Glad I was DCing. So everybody who's been negative, then they weren't right. And I just stay in the middle and go, I don't know which one it is. I'm not that smart. I don't have a crystal ball. So I dollar cost average. I go, well, eh, good thing at least I dollar cost average something. And I go up. But why do I think it's going to go down? I like to look at history and I just take a look and see to myself, history doesn't always repeat perfectly, but it's kind of an, it, 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 there are similarities. I, I don't like that, that, that one phrase about it's uh, history doesn't repeat, but it does rhyme. I think it's dumb, but um, I just look at history to see where we're going. And again, I can just, Look at this. This is where I see things. So far, this has been pretty accurate. And it was funny because like, I remember looking at four-year cycles back in, you know, the, the first four-year cycle. When I got in 2017, I was like, I don't think it's going to repeat just perfectly like that because why would it repeat? We had all these institutions in here. And the CME was going to do a futures contracts with, with Bitcoin. So that's going to go up. And then ah, John McAfee said it was going to go to a million. So why would I, why would these things repeat? That's stupid. That's what I thought. And now here we are <laughs> repeating the same things. Anyhow, that was 2018 and 2017. So here, so here's what I think from top to bottom, from 20, from the first four year cycle, between and everything starts with a halving 2012 a halving 2013 all-time high 2014 a dip 2015 a reset reset years are the best time to invest usually the low points and it starts to go up so from top to bottom you get 85 percent then yeah do this one the next four-year cycle 2016 was the halving 2017 all-time high 2018 dip 2019 reset 2019 reset year, it was a great time to invest. It was 84%. Then we came over here and all the geniuses said, June is the bottom. All right. So again, 2020 was the halving. 2021 was the all-time high. 2022 was the dip where we think that we'd see the low point. 
then 2023 is the reset. Again, reset years are a great time to invest. Not financial advice. That's just what it was in the past. And we thought June was the bottom. We, and I thought it was weird because I'm like, it's only 70%, which is kind of weird, 84, 85. But then we're like, ah, oh, wait. It went in November to 15.7. And that was 77%. So I'm like, well, if we just repeat these two time frames, that 85, 84, I don't know. Maybe it goes 83%. Maybe it's 11K. I don't know. I think it's going to be 10K again. And then just the macro environment doesn't lend itself to say that we're going to go on some parabolic bull run because I don't think the economy can, I mean, we can't really sustain that. Look, people are going to jump out of stocks. There's, I mean, I, here, let me show you something. thing called the Buffett indicator and the Buffett indicator is pretty accurate as well there's a website it's called longtermtrends.net and what it is it's a measure of the total value of all, of all publicly traded stocks in a country divided by that country's GDP okay so all the stocks roughly are 40 I don't know, 43 trillion somewhere around there all American stocks GDP is around 21 trillion. So that's like 200%. That's where we're at right now. Or that's where we're at at the all-time high, excuse me. So you can just see that once we go above this mean, which is around 85%, things just start to taper off. So in 2000, when we hit way, way above, it went, usually went by 50%. So it was 140%, it went all the way down to 70%, okay? 2007, housing bubble, right? It was 105 percent and it dropped down to like 52 53 53 half roughly and then over here when we dropped to 200 percent we should go down to like around 100 percent half and we're just here i think we're super overvalued and look at this one we're at 147 percent and that's right now in 2000 we were super over overvaluated and we're and we're above that still so the macro environment, I don't think, is going to lead itself to that. And I think with no more quantitative easing for a bit, now we're in quantitative tightening, which we've never done before, I might add. Quantitative easing we do all the time. And then, of course, war in Ukraine, whatever. Supply chain issues, sure. Housing market, bubble, yes. Rates are up, yes. Sure, that's it. So that's, that's pretty much what comes down to why I think we could go lower. There's a couple of things of why on the opposite side of where I'm more bullish. And that's, I'll lead you to this, into theblock.com. And uh, perfect. You probably wanna see my screen what I'm talking about. This, do you know how people are hanging on? This is the holder's time composition. For people who have one Bitcoin, or holders for not one Bitcoin, holders of one year plus of Bitcoin, of all wallets. One year plus is the most. You're looking at, ah, let's just go back. This makes it easier for me. Holders composition is 72% of, of, of one year plus people are holding. If you held all the way till now, 72% of you, you ain't selling. You're not gonna sell but you still got that, that sticky 28%. And that's really all you need to kind of make things move around, right? 72%, that's cute, that's great, that's fantastic, but you can still have it go down. Also, the other big thing that I like to I look at um, is just this one. I'm always talking about it. But... We're only at $800 billion for a market cap. And the stock exchange is $100 trillion, roughly. That's for all stock exchanges. That's Japan, Shanghai, Hong Kong, Euronext, Shenzhen, New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ. Money supply, global debt, <laughs> $253 trillion. Global real estate, $280 trillion. Like, I think these people... If they 
are figuring out like, hey, we might have this this 10 year stagnation like uh, Stanley Druckenmiller talks about and a lot, of, a lot of other like the Paul Tudor Jones talks about. They're probably thinking to themselves, well, if it's going to be that crappy, I'm not going to get returns. Maybe I want to get a little risky at some point and just put like 1% allocate something into something like an emerging tech. Maybe this will be it. It's risky, but maybe. So I look at those two things. I'm like, maybe that's the other, other part. But the other part still escapes, doesn't escape me. Just the macro backdrop. And that's it. So. So pool, man, that's a long answer to one question. True. It's a dynamic green screen. It goes dark when the lights move out. So. Uh, Jeff, do you DCA and hold in your hand precious metals? I don't. Sorry to say, it's all in my Roth IRA through iTrust. My brother, though, is smarter than me, and he buys physical gold and silver. So he's, he's ahead of me on that one. I need to do that. <laughs> you know, Mark Cuban had this, had this, this funny comment. He was on uh, Bill Maurer's podcast, and Bill, Bill Maurer was, was saying that, uh, that he owns gold and silver. And uh, uh, he, said, uh, he said, why would you hold gold and silver? He goes, if you own gold, you're a dumb F. You're a, you're a dumb effer. And, you know, this is Mark Cuban talking. And, uh, and he's like, if you own gold, you don't understand. He goes, when the S hits the fan, the bigger, better, badder people are going to come in there and just steal your gold away from you. And they're going to they're ride off into the wasteland. And I just thought to myself, first of all, my God, that's dumb. That's a dumb response. You're not stupid for holding precious metals. They've, they've done pretty well for a long time. I, that's just how it is. It's true. And then second of all, if we're in like Mad Max, Thunderdome type of place, they don't give a crap about your gold and your silver. They're going to steal your water and your food and your weapons and your ammo. Come on. Everybody knows that. That's what in all movies are, dystopian futures. <laughs> Coffee Zilla should box with Logan Paul. That would not be a very, that would, you know what? I would pay for that fight. I would watch that on, yes, I would watch that on pay-per-view for sure. I know who would win, and it's not Coffee Zilla. Logan Paul is literally will be punching down. Thank you. Quinn Ledger is amazing. It's very easy. Piper, did you read the article I sent you? I haven't had time. Been uh, busy today, but I'll get to it. Diesel Kane. Rusty Bot brings us together. Uh, <laughs> who would want to fight between coffees on Andrew Tate? Well, if Andrew Tate gets out of jail, uh, it'll be Tate by a long shot. Okay, so Matthias says, hey, Rob, your video on Adam was great. I heard several people talk about it as a good project, but the tokenomics made it a bad investment. Does not number go up any thoughts? The same thing with Algorand, actually. What I'll do is, um, and somebody made, made a good comment. They said they said that uh, the the we did a, a video this morning. It was me, Jerry Hall, and Cryptocito, and we talked about Adam or Cosmos. Crypto Cito is in, he lives in Portugal, but he's from Germany and he's really keen on Cosmos and Adam. And I asked some, I asked just the basic questions like, you know, what is it? How does it work? And, you know, what makes it so great? But what I messed up on and somebody pointed out to me, they said, Rob, you were not, um, you were not very careful in your questions. You should have asked them, you know, what, what is the downfall? What are the problems? What are the tokenomics? And you know what? I was like, you're absolutely right. I did mess that part up. So what I'll probably do is I'll bring Tokencito back on and we'll talk about it at some point and just talk about what are the what are the, the hindrances of Cosmos? Because I hear the tokenomics are an issue. Developers might be an issue. And we're going to dig into it. Maybe we'll get a developer from Cosmos to come on. Who knows? But uh, yeah, every project has a problem in some way, shape, or form. I just did a, a poor job in highlighting that. So... Yeah, look at that. Someone admits they're wrong. <laughs> ah, Rob, I thought you were Mark Moss for a second. I'm way, way more handsome than Mark Moss. What are you talking about? Just kidding. Mark Moss, good guy, great channel, gets a ton of views. He used to live here, actually. I don't know why he lived to, moved to Rancone. 
It was out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, if you're a surfer and like to drink, that's the place to be. It's a great little like sleepy surfer town, but I'm like, I don't know why he moved out there. Now he's in Austin. Whew, good luck. Dennis McCulkin says, taxes for Masterworks Investments. If you have sold any of your art pieces, like I haven't. You have to understand Masterworks is a long-term hold. Very boring. Diversification. So if you sold something, then you have a capital gain. Well, or a loss, but mostly capital gain. And in that situation, then you're going to get a, uh, a form from them, a tax form, which states that uh, this is your, your revenue or how much you've, you've gained. You can give it to your CPA and go from there. But if you haven't sold anything... There's nothing to report uh, unless you're doing something else with trusts or whatnot. Then you have to talk to your CPA. Uh, Ocean X, please chill. Yes. Uh. Coffeezilla says the whole group is. I don't think he's he's talks about how much of a scam it is. I think there are a lot of projects that are scams and he's 100% right. Let's be honest. How many, um, there's a great question. How many scams have you been a part of? Or not scams, let's just say rug pulls. And a rug pull also is when some shady developer, shady, shady, I said shady, some shady developer comes on and is like, oh, bad news, or project lead. Uh, we had a hack and all of our funds are gone. So good luck, everybody. Sorry. And then they just drift in, the, in. They just, you know, drift away into oblivion. How many of you have been a part of that? And Coffeezilla is right then. And I got to tell you, there's a reason why people become Bitcoin maxis <laughs> because of that situation in and of itself. Oh, I love these. I love. I love trolls. Josh Josh says, stay poor. This clown will be hating on us while we waited for, while he waited for 10K Bitcoin. This dude is a scammer. Well, Josh, you have to explain yourself. I don't know if you're talking about me or somebody else, but I haven't scammed anybody. And as far as like waiting for 10K, I'm still dollar cost averaging down to that point. So I'm not telling you to wait. Let me make that myself 100% clear. I'm not telling anybody to wait for 10K. I just think it will go to 10K. I personally am dollar cost averaging still and will dynamic DCA past 15K. So, Gustavo Santos, what do you think about the Gemini issue? I think it's it's potentially the next shoe to drop. If you're not, not aware, Tyler Winklevoss, one of the Winklevies, sent out a letter to Genesis. Go, look, we've been shut down, I want to say 64 days or 84 days now uh, from Genesis, which is which is their... Uh, which is their Gemini Earn program, which is in Genesis, which is a part of the uh, digital currency group, which is also owned Foundry and a little thing called Grayscale and Coindesk. And they're saying, look, you need to open up withdrawals and you keep Barry Selbert. You are running around and you're not acting in good faith. And we need to come to the table and figure this out. <clears throat> Barry Selbert's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Me personally, I don't know how Genesis is still afloat. I don't know why they're not in Chapter 11 right now. I don't know why they're not in bankruptcy. If you tell your customers you can't withdraw anything from our platform, you're like, well, do something, but you have to restructure yourself. You're going to have to liquidate because I want my money back. At some point, you're going to start to see lawsuits pile up. So I don't know how they're not out in Chapter 11 now. It's been a long time. All right. So what I think about the Gemini issue, I think, remember when I talked about Bitcoin at 12K or 10K? Imagine if that contagion, which is really FTX contagion, imagine if that contagion has wormed its way into Genesis already, and then it worms its way into Grayscale. Now take a look at what would happen if Grayscale had to do some kind of liquidation. Do you know how much Bitcoin Grayscale owns? Let me show you. And we talked about this yesterday. Treasury. <clears throat> There's a website called buybitcoinworldwide.com forward slash treasuries. What I'm going to do is I'll drop that in the chat. You can see this yourself. So Bitcoin treasuries. Ba, 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 ba. There's 65 entities in this. 
And the percentage of 20, the percentage of 21 million is seven, almost 8%. Last update of December 29, 2022. So not too long ago. Public companies that own Bitcoin. MicroStrategy owns 132,000, which is almost 1%. It's about 0.63%. And it falls off from there. China apparently owns almost 1%. Debatable, but I guess. Ukraine owns 0.2%. I had no idea that happened. Uh, let's see. Mount Gox, 0.67%, which every time that I hear about a dump, some stupid uh, news report about Mount Gox is dumping, and it never happens, but whatever. At some point, it will. Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. They have 643,000 Bitcoin. The percentage, the percentage of 21 million, about 3%. Now, I don't know if that 3%, because that's, I don't know if they're talking about the percentage of 21 million or the percentage of the circulating supply or the percentage of how much Bitcoin is actually out there minus all the Bitcoin that's been lost. But it's a boatload. So the thing I'm trying to get to is this. The Gemini issue, if it warms its way into Genesis and it warms its way into Grayscale and you get a big boatload or at least some of that Bitcoin that get, that's put onto the market for sell pressure, there comes your 12K. And that's probably it. I could be wrong. I stepped away for a minute. Yeah, Gemini might force DCG in Chapter 11. As well they should, and they should liquidate. But I'm not a... I will tell you this, though. Uh, Genesis came out, and they hired Moellis & Co. Moellis & Company. It's an investment bank. And you know who, who hired them for options? Voyager. Celsius. I think BlockFi, I can't remember. But Moellis and company is kind of like the kiss of death before you hit chapter 11. They're like, what's our options? I'll tell you your options, chapter 11 or chapter seven, liquidation. So uh, that's what's happening there. <laughs> I'm an idiot in all markets. Uh, yeah, I wish I sold a year ago. I think everybody can attest to that. which I'm going to remind everybody of one thing. This is going to be very unpopular, but who cares? So let's go back to looking at Bitcoin. And I've, I've talked about this before. You know, everybody who's like diamond hands, remember that term diamond hands? That was a good term. Great term. And the people that tell you, you know, I'll never sell. I'll never sell my Bitcoin or my crypto because I'm going to diamond hands this to oblivion. And they could be right, you know, but if, you're, if your goal is to at some point hold as much Bitcoin as you possibly can and you know about the cycles, and here's another thing, like if you need to sell because you're like, hey, I need to pay my bills, why wouldn't you sell? I'm just, I'm just asking the questions. So when people are talking about like, oh, you know what? I'll never sell, bro. Well, that's a personal opinion about what you are going to do. This is go to look into Bitcoin.com. Click on whale shadows. And under whale shadows, I want you to turn off. Let's see. Let's just turn, turn off 10 years, seven and nine years. So what this is, is for people who bought Bitcoin. From the time they, they bought it, four to five years later is when they move it. Not that they're selling but they're moving it from a wallet to some other wallet. But what do you notice? You notice that these wallets start moving in four to five years when the price starts going up, right? And then it kind of drip, drips down. Then it goes up again. Because the people that are telling you that are diamond hands are a bunch of liars. Not all of them, granted. There's some very, very you know, straightforward, straight as narrow people. But I think a lot of them are liars. Here's five to seven years, same thing. Here's seven to nine years. Oh, look, where is, where is the concentration? All-time highs. And then lastly, 10-year plus. Even these guys sell. Now, I will preface it with this, and that is that it's true. They're just moving Bitcoin. They're not putting on exchange and selling it. That's not what that data is showing. It's just moving from one wall to the next. I got to tell you, 
since 20, I've, I've got uh, multiple ledgers. And one has a couple of, a good amount of Bitcoin on it. And uh, I wasn't going to sell that. And I've never just taken that ledger and moved my Bitcoin, even though it's been sitting around there for four years, just for, you know, S's and giggles. Like, hey, we're at an all-time high. I probably should move this. Well, it's been been sitting there just fine. Usually if I'm going to move something, it's, I'm either going to sell it or I'm going to buy a good or a service or maybe even some real estate. Don't tell my tax. Don't tell the IRS that. I've never done that, but I'm just saying. So when people talk about, oh, you know what, bro, diamond hands, show them whale shadows and say, you know what, I don't know which side you're on. Again, there's some good people out there. There's some people that truly believe what they're saying, but there's some people that are saying that just to say it. And I'm not that person. I have sold. I will sell again. I don't see why that's so, so hard. <sighs> I'm going to sign up with I don't trust. That's pretty good. Tremel, Penny, that's a good picture. What platform does everyone use to buy crypto? I personally use Coinbase. And I use this thing called Coinbase One. It's 39 bucks a month. And that allows me to not pay any fees of up to $10,000, which is pretty cool because like, because I, you know, I take profits and I buy every day. And sometimes I buy multiple things on a day, depending on the altcoin. And uh, I get to waive all those fees. So for 39 bucks, uh, I do a lot. Uh, not buying now. Well, Mullet's not doing it. <laughs> we can sell. Yeah, Moss is a surfer. Can a, a U.S. individual sign up for a Cosmos account through a VPN? I don't know what you're talking about there. Like, because I don't, I don't know. Because usually what I do is I just purchase Cosmos. I purchase on Coinbase and that's it. And as far as like staking, anybody can stake. That's what's great. Uh, put a buy limit. Yeah, that's a good idea. Jang and Cho says, put a buy limit at 7K. But the, then, you know, some people say, well, how can you put a buy limit in when, uh, when you're not supposed to have any, everything on the exchanges? You know, Tom Crown had a pretty good point. He said, take everything off exchanges except for the money that you need for your limit orders. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. You know, if you want to, everything's a risk, right? So why not? I guess so. Uh, do you think Grayscale Bitcoin discount will improve? Now, unless that ETF gets approved, and that's not happening, so no. But I could be wrong. <laughs> Igor says, when is the Voyager debit card coming out? Hilarious. So, yeah, that was one of my utmost mistakes. Voyager and VGX. Golly. It sucks because, like, I mean, at least, I, I will say this, at least with Voyager, they're a publicly traded company. So when they put out that that document which states that they did a $640 million loan to Three Arrows Capital with zero collateral, I was like, I, I like you guys, but that is dumb. So went on, did the video two weeks before. And that's actually when I did, did those rules, the rules that you see right underneath me all the time. So then two weeks later, they shut off uh, withdrawals. So, yeah. Celsius, I wish I would have got them sooner. Uh, I did the video at like 11 o'clock and 11 a.m. and the 9 p.m. They shut off uh, withdrawals. But I got six figures stuck on there too, so I'm with you. Uh, that guy's not in jail. All right. Cho says, it's funny how SEC is taking action because of FTX implosion. It's weird. Ironic. And you know what's even stranger? Let me show you something. It's strange that Gary Ginzer was investigating them, was investigating FTX for all this time, and just couldn't pull the trigger for some reason or another and just let things go. So I'm like, what is, 
that's your that's your job. You're supposed to be able. You're supposed to be the police officer, and you just couldn't pull the the trigger. And now here we are. But there was something else that. Oh, this one right here. I was going to do clown news, but I'll just show you guys this. Did you hear, read this article? White House claims the meeting between SBF and senior Biden officials were about the pandemic. <laughs> White House claims the meetings between SBF and senior Biden officials were all about the pandemic. Who better to talk about the pandemic than a vegan philanthropist? Makes sense. A bunch of liars. I don't know. Yeah. No beef with James. I just talked to James yesterday. <sighs> yeah, this is pretty much what it was. Rob guys versus James Vies versus Cowan guys. That's pretty much <laughs> what it came down to. So we just separate. Everything gets a little more toxic in the uh in the in the bull bear market. So yeah. VPN, yes, permits extra jurisdiction. Yeah, good good point. Logan Beard is, this is not financial advice. You should be accumulating across the next six months. Remember, most recessions were not officially called until the market already bought them. I got I to gotta disagree. And I'm going to disagree because even though I'm accumulating, can you go wrong, in all honesty, if you just said, you know what, I'm just going to wait? Because... What are the chances that some major fantastic news comes out? Probably slim. I'm just kind of going against my biases and just putting a little bit of fun is in. But in all honesty, if you waited six months, you'd probably be just fine. You know, and then let's say that Bitcoin does go up. Do you think it's going to skyrocket to 100,000, 50,000, 30,000 in six months? Probably not. I think you're going to be just fine. And uh, if you don't make it, you don't make it. I mean, if you don't make it, I mean, I think that uh, waiting six months is not the big thing. It's sitting out for the next three, four, five years or never investing. I think that's that's a problem. That would be a problem for me. Maybe not for you. I don't know. Uh, ah, Shakir, listen, are you buying alts now? What's your top five? I am buying alts and I'm buying uh, Ethereum and Cosmos and Polygon and Cardano and some other stuff. Chainlink, I, I forgot some other stuff. But you understand, that's micro DCAing. That's not putting out near, like let's say that I, I buy $10,000 worth of Ethereum a, a week in the past. Let's say I did that. Now I'm buying like 100 bucks a week. I mean, it's just a fraction, 10% of what I would usually do. And that's it. And of course, everybody could be like, I used to buy 20 bucks a week. Okay, well now buy five bucks a week. I think it's just this is all what you want to do. Yeah, clown news. Yeah, <laughs> Tesla's is telling more. And some people always get they get upset when I when I when I talk about that about like oh you shouldn't you should do that because dollar cost average like look man, I'm just gonna do what I do. You can do whatever you want to do. It's up to you. I mean don't listen don't listen to a guy who just talks to his computer in front of a really crappy green screen. Robert, are you still buying Gala? Big jump today? No, I just hold it. I should though, but now nah, I'm not a big gamer, but I see where gaming is going. Web3 is going to be big at some point. I think that's it. I'll leave it with this. I learned the most important thing in crypto is getting into a good, honest community. There is nothing more critical to your success in this industry. It's very tough to do, very tough to find. There's so few out there. And uh, Joey's got a good point. If you can find those, hold on to them, especially the honest part. Bunch of liars. Anyhow, that's it for today. So look, you guys like today's video, thumbs up. Consider subscribing, all that great stuff. It's beer time. It's uh, almost 7 o'clock here. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Adios.